Okay, so hello and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to this 45th Platform Academy session. This is our penult penultimate session of the year. Uh, and we have two bangers back to back this week and next week with uh, Jason Lefevre, who's our guest speaker for today. Um, we will be covering uh, two sides of our processes, uh, like we uh, like to call it, and that is playbook experience and process automation designer. And today's topic, we will start with the uh, user experience side, that is playbook experience. And so I want to ask you, Jason, give a please give a quick introduction to yourself. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Jason Lefevre. I am on the workflow automation product team on the now platform I'm responsible for both playbooks and process automation designer. I love all things uh, process automation and so happy to be here to talk about our latest innovations. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jason. Uh, hi, everyone. To everybody who does not know me yet, my name is Lisa Hohenstein. I'm an outbound product manager uh, for the Now platform. My favorite uh, products that I get to cover are process automation designer and playbooks, decision builder, and flow designer. So everything workflow automation on the Now platform. I've been with ServiceNow for almost five years, going on five years early next year, and I'm excited to have everybody join us today. If we can get to the next couple of slides before we head into the topic, I'll have some a few slides of housekeeping. You always, you all know this one. Uh, so this is, I, uh, we might be talking about future looking statements, coming features, planned enhancements to our products. Please don't make any purchasing decisions based on anything we say today. Uh, as always, uh, this academy is a uh, part of a larger series of academies. We have loads of uh, platform academies in our, our portfolio. Uh, there will be another slide uh, later uh, in this deck to share with you all of the cool uh, series that we do have. But the uh, link that you register to get to this session will also point you to the other academies. We have academies about uh, mobile and analytics and <laughs> next experience. Uh, and all kinds of cool platform stuff. So make sure to check those out. And with that, I think I can hand it over to Jason. Awesome, thanks Lisa. So uh, we're here today to talk about our UI side of processes on the Now platform. Uh, before I dive into playbook experience, I wanna talk more broadly about workflow automation capabilities. We offer a number of different low and no code builders for building and managing um, automated workflows on the now platform. <clears throat> this includes flow designer. So building reusable flows, subflows and actions, decision builder, a no code experience for uh, building and maintaining business logic outside of code. And then process automation designer and playbook experience, taking our re reusable pieces of automation and sequencing them in enterprise business processes. And then on the playbook experience side, surfacing UIs to our users whenever they're completing work in a process on the Now platform. So playbook experience, again, that UI component, this is our way to help a user progress through the steps that are required to achieve an outcome. Our back end to a playbook is a process definition in process automation designer or known as PAD. We're gonna dive into PAD in our next Academy series. We'll focus on playbook experience today. So initially released in the Paris release, playbook experience has been around for a couple of years now, and it is a way to visualize, interact with business processes in runtime. And it provides users with a simple task-oriented view so that you have consistent response to commonly encountered situations. So let's talk about some of those situations. If I am working on incidents, if I'm a help desk technician and I need to respond to incidents, I may have multiple different types of incidents that I need to respond to. And so rather than having to memorize these processes or refer to knowledge articles that outline the steps of the process, the playbook actually outlines the process for you. So as you complete one step and progress to the next, it will guide you through the sequence that you should follow in order to achieve the desired outcome, incident resolution, case resolution, request fulfillment, whatever type of work you're trying to achieve on the Now platform, you can use a playbook to sequence the work that your users will interact with in order to achieve your desired outcomes. 
So we wanted to ask a question to everybody today. Uh, if you are familiar with Playbook Experience, how extensively is your organization using it today? So Lisa, why don't you go ahead and launch yes. the first poll question? That is my, my cue. <laughs> and while we're waiting for people to reply to this, I have posted some links in the chat. One is for next week's session. So if you're registered for this one, you should already see that. But if you want to follow up with a recording, if you can't make it next week, uh, you can find the recording there. And then also one of the things I do want to share with you, if you haven't uh, seen much about process automation designer and playbooks yet, you can go to the uh, Workflow Automation Center of Excellence on the Now community, which has loads of resources, previous academy sessions and videos, and uh, also uh, training on now learning and um, developer advocate content and all kinds of good and interesting things. There are enough people here that are very new to playbooks, which is amazing. And thank you so much for joining us because you'll learn what playbooks are in just a second. Awesome. So a uh, great thing is that as you launch into 2024, you can think about how to um, implement playbooks so that your organizations can drive consistent resolution experiences, not only for the people that are doing the work, but for the people that are requesting things. So someone that, that is initiating a request or uh, initiating a case in order to, uh, in, uh, for new lines of business, new services, uh, incidents, help with trouble, uh, whatever the case may be, can drive a consistent response, but a consistent end user experience when receiving help. All right, let's move right along. So uh, we are going to talk about what is new for Playbook Experience. The last time we uh, I was here with Lisa, we were talking about Tokyo features. And oh, yeah. at that point, Playbook was still very new. Um, and so I think we were talking about optional activities and uh, auto progression through playbooks. Uh, when I complete steps in one stage, it will auto progress me to the next stage. Most recently, we uh, came out with our Utah release as well as our Vancouver release. So we'll, we'll highlight a couple of features there. The first of which is our playbook custom layout. Uh, so what I have here is a screenshot of a, of a playbook in a workspace. And I'm going to highlight the key components that are part of a custom layout. The reason why we introduced this feature is we receive feedback that customers want to be able to lay out their playbook components in different ways, so different orientations. Our initial playbook layout is one monolithic component. So you've got a vertical stage and activity picker with an activity viewer in the center of your workspace page. And that was, you know, kind of all or nothing. You, you have the component or you don't. Now with custom layouts, we've introduced a playbook custom layout data broker for a UI builder page. What this will do is it will give you access to all of our component presets for the play, playbook components. So I'm gonna build this slide out here and show you the different components that are on this page. So you can see we've got a playbook picker. This allows the user to select the playbook that they wanna follow. It is possible to trigger and run multiple playbooks for the same parent record. So this gives your user options in terms of what sequence of steps they should follow. You have a horizontal stage picker in this layout. So this is uh, showing the, the stages that are part of the process lifecycle, giving you indicators as far as which stages have been completed, which ones are in progress, and what is yet to come. Your activity picker lists the activities or process steps that are part of the current in progress stage. And then finally, your activity viewer. This is where your user is going to complete most of their work within the playbook. They will interact with forms and complete uh, field inputs. They can review lists. They can launch records. So if I want to open a list or open a record similar to what we see here, maybe I'm going to open a report for a credit check. You can complete steps and progress your playbook through the process lifecycle. So the, the data controller allows you to have access to all of our presets. This is the pre-wiring of all of these components within the UI builder page. And the other thing that it does is it allows you to build custom components. So in this example, we've got what looks like a bank loan application lifecycle. 
I'm going to hover over this loan estimate section here. The data controller will allow you to dynamically update sections on your page. So if you want to show a summarization of your customer profile as you initiate the, the case review, and then later on you want to show things like loan estimates, the data controller gives you access to all of the underlying process data. And you can then bind that process data to your custom component and update it dynamically as your process progresses. So there's a lot of power here and also added flexibility. So again, our monolithic component has now been broken up into modular components that allow you to lay them out on the page as you wish. And the data controller gives you even more power to add custom process aware components to your page. So that is custom layouts. The next thing I want to talk about is a Vancouver feature. This is our mobile playbook. So now it is possible to embed a playbook into your now mobile app. So if you have use cases where uh, your, your knowledge worker is on the go and needs to be completing work at their fingertips while on the go, they can follow a playbook from their mobile device. So in Vancouver, we released a default page that has um, the pre-configured layout for the process, and it support, supports several actions, such as being able to open a record, open a list, and other mobile native events. The first team that implemented uh, a mobile playbook is our field service management team. So they have some work order type of use cases for which they're shipping pre-configured playbooks, but this is available to anyone that uh, uses the platform. So we ship the page, as you build out your mobile application, you can embed a playbook into the mobile app and then support whatever type of custom use cases are uh, are required. I'll pause this there. This is awesome. Yeah, this is this perfectly fits because one of the questions we just got is: Can playbooks be you only used in workspaces? Can or can they be used in core UI? So as we just now learned, they can also be used in the mobile apps, uh, but then uh, uh, it's currently configurable workspaces and next experience pages uh, built in UI Builder. And then in Vancouver, we added the mobile controller and core UI is currently not supported. That's correct. Awesome. Uh, one more question in chat um, was about the licensing. Um, I've put the answer there, but we're very pleased to uh, say that we did remove the uh, trigger table restrictions that were uh, previously in place for process automation designer. So you can build playbooks for any table that you're licensed for. Awesome. And then the last one, can playbooks be used offline? I think that pertains to the mobile question. Can Do you know that, Jason? Not yet. So we're still trying to crack that. Uh, it, we, we have it on our backlog. It is uh, top of mind as we enhance our mobile capabilities. Uh, and so we're thinking of ways to uh, best support that. Awesome. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. And the last thing that I'm going to highlight before we jump into the demo is our recent UI improvements. So over time, as our design systems change, uh, and as we get design and user feedback, uh, we like to refresh the look and feel. So you can see here that we've got some refreshed icons uh, as far as our in progress and our pending icons, uh, just, just a fresh look and feel for interacting with a playbook. And then the other thing, you know, uh, not a huge change, but, but certainly a nice uh, fit and finish change. Whenever I complete an activity previously, my read-only view of an activity card would be just a label value pair kind of flat list. Didn't look too fantastic. We are now honoring the form view that is referenced in an activity UI. So Playbook is great at referencing form views. And when you complete work, it will just establish uh, a read-only view of your activity so that you can go back and take a look at previously entered data should you need to do so. So just some overall fit and finish improvements to the look and feel of, of our playbooks. All right, so I'm going to do a quick demo. I'm going to jump out of my um, presentation here. 
Here we are in the instance. I'm going to run through our workspace demo. This is just a simple way to see a playbook running in um, a workspace. We haven't built this workspace out significantly, um, but what you can see here is um, how we interact with a playbook in a workspace. So I'll go ahead and allow a new playbook creation. Uh, one thing that we didn't highlight yet, but I will call out because it's part of this demo, is we have a way to launch a playbook from within a playbook experience on the workspace, and that is called Record Generator. Um, so when I initiate a process, I need to create a record or update a record. Uh, and so that will trigger the process to run. But Record Generator is a way of launching the playbook without having initiated the record yet. What it is simply is the first activity of my playbook is going to be the record generator. It's a simple form that collects the bare minimum inputs required to initiate the record. So for this demo, my process is looking for the word playbook to be the first thing in my short description. And then see here, as soon as I complete this activity UI, it's going to generate the incident number and my, my playbook is actually running. So uh, I'm gonna show you just a couple of screens as I as I work through this. This is an incident response type of scenario. So, you know, first thing would be just identifying the issue, understanding what's going on, collecting information about it. We we present a couple of user forms. So add some input variables as the as the help de desk technician. We, we present some instructions. Maybe this is a place to have a conversation with the caller and log some details in the work notes, mark this complete saying, I, I completed this step and move on. Uh, you can present a list. So if I wanna do a sanity check and say, uh, ask the question, does this caller have a duplicative incident already opened? Do I wanna look at the incident history of this user? Have we addressed similar issues for this user in the past? You can take a look at the list and move on. Uh, one thing I wanted to show was uh, some of the improvements to our form. So previously, this would be uh, not such a great experience, a list, uh, a label value pair type of flat list. And now we're honoring the form view so that, uh, you know, even reviewing completed activities is more pleasant. Uh, let me show uh, a couple of cool things about running a process dynamically. So uh, if I have certain steps that should run when only certain conditions are met. You can configure your process to dynamically run or skip those activities. We'll get into more detail on how that configuration is done next week. So come back for next Thursday's pad session, Process Automation Designer. But in runtime, as I am working on my incident, I'm going to intentionally categorize my, uh, prioritize my incident as critical. So we have configured this playbook to dynamically insert a critical incident warning when the priority is calculated as P1. So I'll go ahead and do that. You can see here that previously my next step was to review SLAs, but because we have a critical incident, we have this flash up and now you can see we've incorporated uh, a platform SLA timer. So this is oh, ticking that's down. Uh, we've got, you know, just a message here to say the incident is critical. Please review this. This gives the user to uh, a, a way to say something's different here. I need to treat this case differently. Um, it's possible that you also have a dynamic activity that forces you to escalate. So if your process dictates that when a critical incident is received, that you escalate to the escalation manager, you may dynamically um, populate a form here to update the assignment. Uh, what we've done in this demo is we have an optional activity for a critical incident. So, you know, flashed an information warning, you've got 60 minutes to resolve this case because it's critical. Now we'll do an optional activity insertion. So I go over here to, here to my playbook stage action and I have an add activity option. So as soon as I click add activity, I have insertion points and I can choose where in the sequence I should add this activity. 
And so I'm going to choose this one. And then any optional activities that have been configured relative to the process definition are now presented. This escalate incident activity is a global activity. It, it is insertable at any point in my process, in my playbook when I'm running it. We also have the ability to configure stage specific optional activities. So if I have something that should only be insertable at a per, in a particular stage, I can configure my process to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this activity here. And you can see that I now can escalate an incident. So we're gonna we're gonna pull in the big guns to take care of uh, this incident. Fred's gonna help us out. Um, <clears throat> Fred will save us. <laughs> For those that don't know, Fred is our, uh, the founder of ServiceNow and the creator of the platform. So yeah. So um, I know that we've got a lot of folks that are uh, just learning about playbooks. Let me call out a couple of additional details as we walk through incident response demo. If I am uh, following my playbook, I am updating values relative to my incident record. So you can see here that there are several values that I have uh, updated as we've progressed through the various steps of the playbook. The inverse is true as well. So if I'm interacting with my record form in this workspace, I'm also progressing the playbook. So if I had entered values for all of these fields and then I switched over to my playbook, you'd see that I had completed those activities because their conditions were met. Um, so, you know, really, if you have someone that knows what they're doing, doesn't need to follow the playbook, you can allow them to continue to interact with the record form the way that it is today. Uh, playbooks are a way to ensure a consistent response. So if you've got a highly regulated market where you want to drive um, traceability, auditability, and common response to your uh, scenarios, then you can force users to follow the playbook or you can give them options. So, so really just it's up to the needs of your use case. Uh, let me talk about creating tasks. So it is possible to spin off tasks from your playbook. Uh, you can see here that in the next stage, we're going to try and resolve our incident. Um, we do allow you to display a knowledge article. So if you want to suggest articles that could help the, the technician in uh, responding to and resolving an incident, it's, it's possible to do that. And then they can uh, open a record and review the appropriate information in the knowledge article before returning back to their playbook and moving on. Uh, creating a task. So let's say that we've got a scenario where we need an engineer to get involved. The, the IT help desk uh, has done uh, as much as possible, but you know, perhaps we need a hot fix from engineering. So we can actually create a task um, for uh, assigning to an engineering team or an engineer. So let me say, I'm going to go ahead and create that task. And then uh, if we want to, we can wait for this task to complete before we move on in our playbook. There's a, there's a process step called a wait for condition. And then we can establish a condition to say, wait for the incident task state to be complete before we progress to the next step of our process. So if we want to hold up our, our progression through a playbook until a certain set of criteria are met, we can do that. Otherwise, we can create the task and move on to the next step of the process. So here we have uh, our next step. It's an instruction to say, you know, contact the caller and provide the resolution or workaround. Now, here's where we have another optional activity that we've configured for this process. I'm going to go ahead and email the caller. Let's say that when I initially reached out, the, the caller said, hey, if you have updates, please email me. Don't call me. I don't answer my phone. Send me an email to let me know what the status of this case is. You can insert this optional activity in the resolution stage or the res resolve stage, as it were, and then send the appropriate email to the user. Uh, so let's say, uh, and you can also default values here. So in design time, if you want to refer to your incident ID, you can uh, dynamically pill pick to 
display the incident ID in your subject line. In this case, we didn't add anything specific. So as the help desk technician, uh, you know, I have to enter all of the value here. Engineering. <laughs> hey, Jason, this yes. playbook is available to be installed from uh, with a plugin, right? So people could go to their personal developer instance or their own instances. And once they install uh, pad and playbook and playbook experience, um, then they can try out this one for themselves, right? Absolutely. So we have three demo playbooks that we ship in the app store. And the, the, That's awesome. the store app is called Process Automation Experience Demo. It contains the process definition definitions from Process Automation Designer. It includes our workspace demo configuration, as well as the global playbook experience configuration that will allow you to, like Lisa said, interact with these playbooks uh, on the design time side in the process definition, as well as do what I'm doing here and actually run through the runtime experience via the playbook. So please do install process automation yeah. experience demo and uh, play around with it. So we've got a an incident response demo process. We've got an application approval demo process. So this will take you through some sort of application requiring an approval and then dynamically routing, depending on whether the application is approved or rejected. And then on the case side of things, we have an interaction demo for uh, common case management types of scenarios. Yes, great call out. Awesome. Lisa. So you can go to developer.servicenow.com. If you don't have one, you can get your uh, personal developer instance to play around in. Uh, I believe some of the content for Process Automation Designer should be installed uh, baseline. However, uh, you should always go to the application um, manager and check for latest updates because as uh, Jason pointed out, some of the content that we bring is uh, distributed through the ServiceNow store. It does not require extra license unless it's a playbook for, say, uh, customer service management or security incidents, anything that is tied to our other workflows. But you can install the uh, process automation content plugins and the process automation designer and playbook experience uh, plugins, update those from store as platform features. And then you can try those out or make a copy on your own developer instance for your company. And then you can you can try these and try your hand at processes and playbooks. Absolutely. And then uh, another question that was uh, there earlier uh, to help you get started. Uh, there's training in the Center of Excellence, uh, LinkedIn Center of Excellence that I uh, shared earlier. Uh, there are knowledge co uh, courses from maybe still available from last year, but we definitely do have now learning courses on pad and playbooks. Uh, they've just been updated last month, so definitely go check them out. If you even if you've done them before, uh, they just got an update for Vancouver content, uh, so uh, that is always a good idea to check out. No learning for this content. Great call out, Lisa. And one additional comment I'll make about our App Store releases. Uh, we definitely encourage you to get the latest App Store release that's compatible with your family version. Um, our engineering team takes advantage of our quarterly release cadence. And so our family releases come out twice a year, but we can release to the App Store new features on a quarterly basis. And so we will typically iterate on our product capabilities on a quarterly basis so that we can give you added value more frequently than, than our family release cadence. So please do, um, if you're planning an upgrade of your family release on your instances, go to the app store and get the latest store app version for, po for both process automation designer and playbook experience. All right, we are nearly there. So I don't always complete this playbook as part of the demo, but I'm just gonna do it. So we've got the time. Um, so we have an out of the box checklist activity. Let's say that uh, you know we want the user to acknowledge that they've completed all of these things before progressing. This activity has a completion condition, so it requires all of the checks to be ticked before we move on to the ne the next step. And then finally, we've got a resolution code, um, and we will um, add some notes. 
and then this actually is going to update the state of my um, incident to resolved. So I've started by going into UI Builder. What I wanted to do was show the different out of the box layouts that we ship with our custom layout feature enhancement. So if you go to Playbook Experience Builder, this is where we house all of our out of the box layouts. You can see here that we've got our default mobile page. I mentioned before that um, with the Vancouver release, we are now shipping mobile friendly playbooks. That's where the default mobile page is. And then you would point to that from your mobile app. I'm not gonna go into that today. That's a lot more set up than we have time for, but let's jump into our custom layouts so that we can show you how easy it is to configure your layout should you want to um, play around with how your playbook is presented on your record page. So down here in the layout section, we've got some, um, we've got four layouts. So we've got focused horizontal, stacked horizontal, focused vertical, and stacked vertical. I'm gonna open the focused horizontal and then we'll play around with the components. Okay, so the first thing, I wanna show the playbook uh, data controller. So it's called playbook custom layout. So if you are uh, modifying your record page to have your playbook embedded as a related tab or, as, or in your configurable side panel, you need to have your custom uh, layout data uh, data controller on the page in order to take advantage of all of our presets. And it also gives you access to all of the underlying process data. This is what I mentioned before, the, the power that uh, you have to create custom process aware components that show one thing when you initiate the process and dynamically update as you progress through the process lifecycle. Uh, on our main page itself, we've got a couple of components already added. So we've got our activity picker here. You can see that it is just showing activities. We've got some configuration options if we wanna show stages. So you have the opportunity to um, show what is part of our previous uh, focus layout. It shows a combination of stages and the activities that fall within those stages. I can also hide this because I, I actually have my horizontal stage picker here. We've got the playbook picker at the top. Again, this allows you to pick and choose which playbook you're going to use to complete your outcome. Um, I know that I typically get organizations that ask me, do I need to use this? No, you, you don't need to use any of the components here. You can literally pick and choose which you present. And so if you don't wanna give your users options as far as which playbook they should run, that you want them to follow the single playbook that launches when they initiate the record, then you don't have to expose the picker here. And then alternatively, if you don't have more than one process that triggers when you create your or update your record, then only one playbook will be presented to the user in runtime. Um, my horizontal picker here, this uh, has the same features as our vertical layout in the sense that I can um, invoke stage actions. So in the event that you want to insert an optional activity, um, any custom actions that you may implement such as assign to me, um, we also have uh, playbook actions such as cancel the playbook. All of these are invocable uh, in runtime as you hover on each of the stages. Uh, our activity viewer allows you to choose between a focused and a stacked layout, stacked being a list of all of the activities that are part of the current stage and focused shows just the current activity that you have selected. So let me jump into one of our other layouts so you can see a comparison. Let's go into one of our vertical layouts. And you can see here, uh, same information, just presented in a different way. So I've got my stages, I've got all of my activities that are part of my stages, and then I have my activity viewer. Same configuration options, can choose uh, to edit, stacked or vertical. And on my component here, I can choose if I show stages or not. So again, really just a modular type of experience Let's say I wanna add a new component here um, and I wanna take advantage of presets. So oh, I'm 
maybe if I can type correctly, <laughs> you can see here as I search for a playbook, we've got four components here that have presets available. So when playbook was released in Paris, we didn't have any presets. And so I remember <laughs> Lisa remembers and I remember yes. all of these uh, properties came uh, blank. And so you had to know how to wire up all of these properties in order to get your playbook component working uh, yeah. really required a lot of expertise in order to understand what's going on and how to get the playbook working. Over time, we're incrementally making that simpler so that uh, users can simply drop our components on the page and, and have a working playbook. So, I'm personally very, very excited about this. I... Uh... I used to build the CreatorCon labs for uh, Pad and Playbooks, and the first couple of releases were a little bit of digging, a lot of researching, and a lot of uh, figuring out how to fill out all of these things. And I'm so, so glad to see that with the uh, presets on contro in controllers, I can now have this be pre-filled and not have to know too much about uh, anything in UI Builder, but I can still move around the... Uh, the uh, components the way that I want to have them. So maybe I don't want the stages on the left. Maybe I want them on the right because my audience is uh, better used to doing that because maybe they're in the, in a right to left uh, setup. So it yeah. would be totally possible to move those around and make sure that it looks the way that you would uh, want to have for your agents. Exactly. Uh, we did have one more question about the the playbooks and the layouts in uh, the Q and A, if you don't mind to answer. So, uh, going with the question we had earlier about uh, it being available in Core UI, uh, do you know if that's on the roadmap or uh, planned, or are we focusing on UIB and other interfaces? Yeah, so we are focusing on UIB. Um, it is a seismic component, and so. Our next experience pages are all on the same UX framework and design system. So we're not planning to introduce um, playbooks for core UI. What we do have are um, some components that, that allow you to show process type information, such as our process flow formatter. And that allows you to essentially align your process stages to the progression of your work within core UI. So that is an option for not pursuing uh, embedding playbooks within core UI. But, uh, you know, thinking about uh, pages other than configurable workspace and custom UIB pages and mobile, think about portals, think about third party sites, um, any place where you want to expose ServiceNow workflows, uh, we're working on it. So so when Lisa has me back next, we'll share the, the the most recent things that we have going on right now. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So as we were doing that, I'm just uh, flipping things around. Let me just, um, you know, for, for the sake of illustration, it doesn't look great here because we've got uh, the pain sized at, at uh, an interesting size here, but I can reorder things as I wish. And if I wanted to, let's say, leave this page. Let's say that, um, you know, for a use case that maybe I'm in healthcare and I am a patient and as part of my um, preparation to go to my doctor's visit, I'm going to have uh, an, uh, a, a kind of a, a check-in set of activities that I complete. Uh, so I go to a portal. Maybe my portal isn't going to expose the list of activities because I just want to follow a simple sequence. I want a simple um, screen flow. Maybe we expose this. Maybe we expose the, the, the life cycle, the activity, uh, the stage picker rather, as well as the activity viewer. And then I just simply complete the screens until I have no more work. And then my uh, my my pre-visit requirements have been entered, and then uh, the the work assignment goes over to the healthcare professionals to handle the details that they enter as part of my visit lifecycle. Um, you know, you can certainly look at different layouts for the different um, pages where you're going to present your playbooks. So to an end user in a portal, you may want to present less information, more streamlined playbook look and feel. 
maybe in the workspace side of the same process with your healthcare worker. They have much more detail, many more knobs and whistles and input variables that they can interact with as opposed to your patient. So just some food for thought there. You can, you can customize your playbook layouts for the audience, for the particular person that uh, is interacting with it. So that completes the playbook. Um, Keep in mind, we demoed incident, we talked about a healthcare use case. I think when I did our last count, ServiceNow ships about 125 out of the box playbooks. So there are playbooks that are being shipped with CSM, with procurement services, with ITSM. Um, so, so really um, there's a major push within our organization to give customers out of the box content so that you can have a place to get started but you can really build a process in a playbook for any use case that requires um, tracking work through a process lifecycle, um, sequencing a number of steps for your users to complete in order to achieve a business outcome. Really any use case that you can dream up in the Now platform can, can be managed, Those the, the outcomes can be managed by implementing and following playbooks and processes. So um, I think we will jump back to our slides just to complete uh, yes. the presentation. But I wanted yes. to say, you know, go wild with it. Dream up use cases, mm -hmm. uncover problems within your organizations that you think um, could, could use the capabilities offered here in Playbooks. And we love to hear feedback. So as you implement new use cases, don't be afraid to share them interact on our on our community let us know the innovative things that you're up to to address your own unique business challenges so we will jump back in and move right on we've got one more poll question now what are you excited about and uh while we talk about these things, uh, there were a couple of more questions. I tried to address them as they came in, uh, but maybe you have some more input on them. So one of the questions, can we have multiple playbooks available for a record? Yes, absolutely. I think that was introduced in San Diego, Tokyo, something. I think it predates me. So I've, I'm going to hit my third year anniversary this coming June, and that was available either San Diego or before that. Um, yes, it is possible. So you can create multiple process definitions that trigger when your your parent record is created. And then um, as long as the trigger conditions are satisfied, then multiple processes and playbooks will run when the, the trigger is when the trigger record is created or updated. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Uh, and then the other question just uh, resolved itself. <laughs> All right. So let's let's see. A lot of people are very excited about custom playbook layouts, and as am I, and uh, also a couple for mobile playbook. Uh, I don't want to call out uh, for custom playbook layouts. It's not just the playbook uh, layout that we can uh, configure. Uh, we can also configure custom activity UIs in UI Builder. So each and every activity definition, if you're creating your own or using some that we ship out of the box, you can actually edit those activity definitions too. So you could create your own activity that maybe contains a map to display a location, or you could embed something or use any Next experience component that you would like to. So that's a very exciting level of customization that's also available. Yep, absolutely. Great call out, Lisa. All right. All right. <laughs> I think we're going to do one last call for questions. Sounds amazing. And then again, for everybody, uh, there's loads of content and training already on the community. Um, again, go to Now Learning and complete the courses. Since uh, process definitions run are powered by flows and flow actions, it's always a good idea if you haven't done that yet to also go and take the flow designer fundamentals training before you head into the process automation designer training. Um, but that is, I think, a very, very exciting uh, piece of content. And then if you uh, haven't uh, known about knowledge yet, uh, I will already do the call out now because it's always, uh, it's never too early to talk to your uh, bosses to make sure you can go. 
uh, knowledge is next year in May, I believe uh, 7th through 9th or something. Uh, it's our big user conference that we do every year. And uh, Jason and I will, I knock on wood, probably be there and uh, do presentations and, and labs and training about process automation designer and other workflow automation topics. So uh, make sure you go as well, because it's an amazing chance to network and meet other people from other companies, understand how they use uh, the platform and the workflow automation tools. So uh, knowledge is always a good place to go. I think there are no questions coming in. And if you still come up with questions, remember to check in next week, same day, same time. Uh, Jason will be back and we will uh, take you through Process Automation Designer, which is the design interface to create those amazing playbooks that you've seen in the demo right now or anything that you could think of. And uh, we have more platform academies, as I said before, we have academies about uh, AI and Gen AI, very hot topics right now. We have um, conversational interface academies, Next Experience, mobile analytics, and of course, this platform academy. Uh, sneak preview, sneak uh, uh, announcement that I want to make is next year, that is 2024, I will launch a workflow academy. So be sure to keep an eye out on that. And this one will only focus on all good, th good things, uh, workflow automation. So we'll cover topics in uh, the process world, in the flow world, and also uh, decisions. So uh, that is uh, that is everything Academy. And I think that's all we have. That's right. All right. Uh, so uh, coming back for, uh, for a thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today, even though we had a different schedule than we usually do. Uh, this session would have been on schedule last week, but we did make uh, take a break for, uh, for Thanksgiving in the U.S. And um, we will be, that's why we already will be back next week. Uh, next week will be the last session for this year. Uh, in the coming year, uh, there will be more Platform Academy sessions, but there will also be a Workflow Academy. So I'm very excited uh, about that, and I hope you will join us for that as well. And with that, thank you so much, Jason, for joining me today, and thanks, everybody, who participated. It's a pleasure. Don't as forget to yes, don't forget to fill out the survey. We want your feedback. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.